Hello dear friends, I am Cory and welcome back to this new Cory Paints video. A series of video in which I paint all different kind of miniatures from different type of genre, manufacturer, etc. that basically I have in my backlog and I need to justify why I have to paint them. In this video I'm going to paint something very special that I had on my backlog for quite a while right now. I'm talking about a miniature that I bought from a British company called Northumbrian Teen Soldier. A company that sculpt miniature and I will quote here from their website, old school in style with a twist of the bizarre. Which basically translate to, hey, do you like old style miniature? Well, you're lucky because we want your money. And I gave them a lot of money. <laughs> I bought from them uh, like 12, more than a dozen of miniatures. But this one that I'm going to paint in this video, it's in my opinion, the best miniature that they have in their catalog, which is basically this big dragon knight slash warrior with a heavy armor that is wielding a Schweihanda. I think that's the correct name. It's a very giant sword with a wavy kind of pattern on the blade. Let me know down in the comment if that is the correct name. I think Schweihanda is actually the correct name. But anyway, let's go to the hobby table so that I can show you how I painted the Wormfolk Champion slash Dragon Warrior from Northumbrian Team Soldier. After gluing all the pieces together and basing the model, I've primed it with a black primer and then I dusted it with some white primer on the top to create some zenithal highlight. I don't use this technique very often, but I wanted to give it a try. I took my airbrush and I sprayed my Procreal turquoise on the entire model. I have to admit that filming while airbrushing is incredibly uncomfortable, but I managed to do the thing quite well. Then I decided to airbrush the sword, so I've masked the model with some plastic wrap. I wanted to give this mini a magic vibe, so I decided to try the color shift paint from Green Stuff World. In this case, I opted for the color Solar Anomaly. It took me ages to cover the sword, since this paint is very transparent. After that I start shaving the blue scales, the legs, the head and the wings of the miniature. I mix three parts of water with one part of blue tone from the army painter. At this point I realized that I really didn't like the way the sword turned out, so I decided to strip the paint away and reprime it in black. Keep this as a lesson my friends, don't worry about making or showing your mistakes. You can always change things, it's never too late. After the shade dried I pulled out my makeup brush and I lightly dry brushed the entire model mixing some white scar from Citadel with a turquoise from Pro Acryl. It's time to base coating the rest of the model, starting with the belly, the inner part of the tail and the throat. For this step I use some rock art flash from Citadel. For the bone parts, like the tip of the tail, the horn and the fangs, I started with a base coat of khaki from Vallejo Game Color.
Then I decided to paint the eyes. I wanted a color that could easily stand out and that would create a nice contrast with the blue of the body of the dragon and the color corn red was the best option in my opinion. Back to the sword again, but this time with a more classic look. Sometimes the simple things are the best. I've painted it using the gunmetal color from Vallejo. I've also painted the little chainmail parts that pop out from the armor sleeves. I always like the combination between light blue and gold, and so I decided for the armor and the hilt of the sword to be exactly that color. There are some leather parts around the model, there is one that goes around the throat and four of them scatter on the armor. I painted them with some Bane Blade Brown from Citadel. I've highlighted the eyes by painting a small dot of thin down Wasdaka Red in their center. This way it will help me make the eyes look more natural and real. Then I decided to focus on shading the bones, so I mixed two parts of Lamia Medium with one part of Seraphine Sepia from Citadel, and I applied it on all the bones parts. I also use this mix to shade the belly, the tail and the leather straps. For the gold armor and the sword seals, I shaded them with some Rykelon flesh shade straight out of the pot. I also shaded the eyes with a little bit of Carabar Crimson from Citadel. And as for the last shading, I used some Null Noil for the blade of the sword and the chainmail. Next stage was layering on the previously shaded base coat. The first parts that I layered are the neck and the tail. For this I mixed some rocker flesh with a bit of white scar and I thin it down almost like a glaze to create a smooth transition between colors. I also did the same thing to the bones but by mixing together Zendri dust and Shapti bones from Citadel in equal parts.
For layering the metal parts, I switch on my Dark Star paint. I use two different type of gold. For the armor, I use the color Classic Gold, and for the hilt, I use the Royal Gold color. I try to give a more realistic look to the bones, so I lightly dry brush them with some flayed one flesh from Citadel. I also did the same to the tail. As a last touch, I glazed the tip of the tail and the base of the horn with a mix of three parts of water with one part of strong tone from Army Painter. Then I hedge highlighted the latter parts with a very thin down mix of one part bane blade brown and one part white scar. As a final touch, I drew a thin black line in the center of the eyes to simulate the reptile pupil of this Dragon Knight. I've also painted a little white dot on the inner top part of the eyes to add a little bit of realism to the model. And now my favorite part, the base. I started by painting the edge of the base with some black paint. For the terrain I'd use a cheap craft store brown color. The reason is that I find pointless to use our very expensive miniature paints for the terrains. You can obtain a very nice effect even with cheap and generic paints brand. In the next step, I dry brush the base with some Tusk of Fur from Citadel. Then I shade it with some Agrax Earth Shade, also from Citadel. And in the end, as a final dry brush, 
I'd use some Baneblade Brown. The very final touch was to add the static grass to the base. To do this I mixed some PVA glue with some water, and I painted some dots around the base. Then I applied the static grass to it. And here we have our Dragon Knight completely painted and ready to fight. Thank you very much guys, even though Northumbrian Teen Soldier did sponsor this video, I don't care, I will leave the, the link down in the description if you're interested in this model and you wanted to buy it and try to paint it yourself. Subscribe, leave a like and let me know down in the comment what you think about this model and this video, I would really love to, to see your suggestion about it. And again, I'm Cory. thank you very much, see you in the next video. Oh, by the way guys, you can find a list of all the color that I use in this video down in the description, and also the links to my social media like Instagram.